Greetings, this is a quick video to show you the steps to download and install the iTree desktop software. We are interested in trying to install iTree Eco, which requires you to install iTree software on a desktop or laptop computer. I am currently at the homepage of iTreeTools.org and this is a good starting place to uh, learn a little bit more about the system requirements and what's involved in acquiring the software. Uh, there is a download link at the top, but you can also go through uh, tools to get to that too. And this gives you just some basic information, help for installing iTree desktop tools or PC. And then so system requirements is also a good page to open up and ensure that you have uh, the proper system requirements on your laptop or desktop computer. This can't be installed on devices like an iPad. It runs on a, a Windows operating system. So at the time of this video, which is November 2020, we still are requiring Windows 7 or greater to use iTree. And you'll note at the bottom here, we do not support installing iTree on um, Apple Macs, unfortunately, there are people who do run iTree on Macs using a shell environment which allows you to run Windows, but that's not something that we uh, support or offer assistance for, but uh, we do know that people that do use iTree in this manner. We provide services and assistance using Windows software at this time, and this is just due to our limitations. And if we go back to that Landing page on tools, you'll also see that there is help for IT departments. One of the things to consider is if you are installing iTree Eco, it has a lot of external communication requirements that require it to fetch data, talk to external servers. And so if you're working on a managed network or system, we strongly advise you to uh, work with your IT department and share this information with them so that they can ensure that uh, they allow your computer to properly communicate with uh, our servers or transfer data for processing at the time um, when you're ready to submit data for uh, estimates, returning estimates and so forth. So there's a whole page that talks about some of these recommendations and some of the more complex ways of allowing managed systems to uh, communicate properly with our system. Hopefully this won't be the case for your installation. So going back to the tools page, there is also the current version of iTree and the change log. So we have what we call the iTree suite, which contains multiple tools. So there are other tools like Hydro, Storm, Streets is an old legacy tool. Um, that also get installed with iTree. I generally just install the package even though I may only be interested in using Eco just for simplicity. So you'll see that the suite has a version number 6.135 at the time of this recording and the version for Eco is 6.021. So these change when things change on the individual applications or the suite install changes. Uh, so these will have uh, documentation in the change log when there's something that changes related to a new version update. This launches a very large PDF with uh, just a few bullets describing recent changes. So I'm going to skip that because that'll take a little bit of time to launch. So if we go directly to the download page from here using the link at the upper right, this just takes us to uh, a page where we then can actually start the process and what we have to do is if you see on this first bullet point here where it has the current version with the .exe that is the installer if I click on this it's going to open up a form which is just asking me to provide some email information and this will send you a link to actually download the software so I'll pause here and fill this out and go ahead and submit this and then we'll pick that up once I get that email. Okay, so I filled out the email form and submitted. You can see at the top here it tells you that a download link was sent and to check your spam folder since this is auto-generated uh, it could be interpreted as spam by your system. 
So I'm going to go ahead and open up the Gmail and you can see I received here a download link from itreetools.org and it tells you that you can either uh, click this link or copy and paste this into your browser. Uh, one of the things that you would we recommend is internet co connectivity is important because this is a very large file uh, 470 megabyte installation file so if you have a unreliable internet connection um, we advise maybe trying to see if you can download it from a better more stable system to ensure that you don't have any interruptions which could affect the installation once you run that so I'm going to go ahead and we'll see if I can click on this and it'll download or if I have to cut and paste it and here too it also just tells you after downloading the installation right click on the file and select run as administrator and usually accept the default so these are important things to remember and so we will just save this file to the desktop and we'll pause here while this is downloading and resume once we have the file available okay my download is complete so I am going to minimize these windows and go to the desktop where I can see that I have the exe installer file on there. And if you right click on this, you can look at some of the properties of this and uh, check the size. And you know it has the version 6.135. Um, this is something that you can come back to to see if if the size doesn't look right, if it looks very small, that's an indication that maybe you had a disruption during the download process. So what we recall is that the recommendation was to right click on this and then run this as administrator. So if you do not have administrator privileges for the computer you're installing this, you will need to uh, seek assistance from uh, IT or whoever controls that. So I will go ahead and start this process here and what this will do is just run the launcher and you will see a number of uh, pop-up screens that will just appear on the desktop. Pull this over here and, and this one tells you, you know, do you want to make changes? And we'll say yes. I have to slide these panels over because I'm working on multiple screens. So once you start this, you will have to accept the terms of the uh, end user's license agreement. This can be read from the iTree website too, and this just goes through some of the um, information related to iTree being public domain software. So we'll accept that and go ahead and hit next. One of the things to consider here is, is I mentioned that you have the option of just choosing which particular software you want installed. I, I usually just do the complete installation just because I've had uh, more stability with that as opposed to trying to uh, pick individual applications. So I'll just leave that on complete and then we'll go ahead and run the install. Uh, one of the things you might see if you're installing iTree for the first time is that uh, it might do some checks and try to install other software that it needs too. So it's, it's running checks on your systems and it might say you do not have a certain file and it's going to try to install that file from the internet. I probably will not get any of those messages because I've ran iTree on this computer before and many of those files already exist in the background. So your experience might look a little bit different. If you see any of these files that it's trying to install, uh, go ahead and let that. It just needs those to, uh, to work properly. And, and this could be potentially one of the places where uh, your experience could differ from what I'm showing you here. Okay, the installation wizard completed its process. So we will accept that and hit finish. And that really is about it to getting iTree installed. And to find iTree, you have to go and hit the Start menu. And it should install a folder called iTree. And you'll see a number of tools. It looks a bit overwhelming, but most of these are just the online tools. And this will 
if I hit Canopy, it should launch a web browser with iTree Canopy a tool. So here's where you can hit iTree Eco V6, and hopefully this should uh, launch on our desktop here, indicating that uh, it installed properly. And so we can see that this um, launched properly and it starts up with a, a splash screen that gives you some information about uh, the version. And if we go ahead and click OK, that brings us back to this base screen. One of the things that um, we recommend users try to do initially is just to open up one of the example projects to see that that launched OK and that you can access um, some of the reports. And so what I did here is I went and hit file, open example project, and then it has a number of embedded projects in here. So this is one from say Torbay, United Kingdom, and if we hit OK, it should launch that embedded project. So yeah, you can see here that it, it opens up initially a metadata report for the Torbay project and then now I have access to some of the uh, reports for that uh, particular project. So if I wanted to look at any of those and just see that they're generating properly, I then can see that and explore and play with those uh, particular options. Or I can go back and look at the actual data. And so these are just example projects that allow you to kind of see what type of information is available in the application. They're not meant for you to actually go and change these, although you could, but if you do want to do that, we'd say make a copy of um, the embedded project first to avoid problems. So all looks good with this. Um, one of the potential areas where you may see some issues is when you're creating new projects, and that's when it also has some additional external communication requirements. So I'm not going to discuss those at this time, but we, we will deal with those, I think, after our next session. So hopefully, you know, the experience was seamless, and if not, remember, you can contact us through the um, iTree Academy 2020 Gmail, and we can assist you with any troubleshooting as needed. Okay, see you soon.